Hey there. Sorry again about the wind, but uh, doing the best I can here to make a video and follow up. It's going to be more difficult right now while I'm in heavy preparation to escape LA or Southern California. Basically get out of a big city. And this is going to be a combo video. This is going to go in the playlist for the bug out and escaping and pandemic pre preparation and being practical and no panic here. Just trying to pass on information that non-dogmatically that you can take if you, in, if you believe it's from a good source, if you think that it will help you, take it. If you don't, it's okay, no big deal. And the other thing, I'm just gonna speak to a couple other things about my recovery and what's going on there and how, you know, how I'm gonna try to keep on the track of what I'm doing and also how this new bump in the road, which I've had many over this 15 years of illness, I have to flip the script once again. If, if I don't flip it, I'm gonna get, you know, when I say flip the script, it means make it positive. Find something within this darkness that's light and find a silver lining if you can. There's not always gonna be one that's right there, but uh, for me, I'm gonna give you the example right now. I was gaining momentum finally. I mean, a lot of you might think, gosh, you're homeless living out of your car and you're, you're, you're out of money and everything, but that sounds dire and it is. Believe me, I get worried on occasion, but um, I was making momentum. I'm feeling better. My treatment that I'm getting is, is helping me uh, more than it's, I'm having more better days than I'm having down days as far as my health. And it's giving me a lot of hope. And I'm also finally pursuing more actively getting back into the work I was doing within the entertainment industry, from voiceover to acting, and this, this form of it as well. And creating some of my art and finding even just job, job hustles, like to get me some income while I'm pursuing the other things and I can get on my feet with my health. So an opportunity with a nonprofit organization, uh, an opportunity with a local cannabis place about medical cannabis that I believe in. And just to name a couple, and also some other income streams that are possible with the coaching and everything. So I'm finally starting to see and put steps more in place for these things because I have the energy, but it's difficult from the way I'm living. And then it's extra difficult now that we have this new pandemic that's going on. And I'm not approaching it like the average person because I'm not in the average health circumstance. I'm in that community that you're hearing a lot in the news talking about as throwaways, essentially. The language we use in the US, at least I can only speak to that is, oh, don't worry, it's only killing people like this guy or your grandmother or your friend that you don't know is immunocompromised that has chronic illness and we talk about it in the news we pass it along like we're just throwaway people it's 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 so tra it's so hard to listen to i'll just say and these are people i'm not even talking about myself i'm talking about others in more compromised health situation so protect them. Don't just go, well, coronavirus, no big deal. I'm healthy in my 20s, so F those people. No, maybe it might make you feel good to be part of a community and wash your hands and cover your mouth and maybe not go to places when you're sick because how about protecting somebody that goes to your gym and not taking your cold or flu to the public sauna to sweat it out in public? Because there's other people and, and I, I can tell you this, I don't know that I ever lived life without thinking about others, and I'm not saying I'm a great person because of that, it's just we're all wired differently. But I know there's some people that have never really experienced thinking about other people. I can tell you this, it feels really good once you start practicing it. 
and it doesn't mean you have to directly go rescue each individual but just having a mindfulness and a consciousness of humanity people around you and and the same way that there's people that will take care of the environment the animals everything which is great but they will care about that way more than they will and they'll be smart snarky about somebody in my position who has kidney disease has has atrial fibrillation heart problems i have autoimmune disease i have been experienced with immuno, like immunocompromised and had experiences where viruses and flus wipe me out and I'm the person that can end up in the hospital. So if I can end up and I look semi fit at times and everything, you're not always going to be able to see, oh, I touched my face, don't worry, I pure out. But we're not always gonna be able to see those individuals around us that are compromised. So assume that they are. When we assume otherwise, you know, it's just, it's not a good thing. So that's part of my spiel on how we can help everyone and be just smarter about this. And you know, everybody does have to ultimately take care of themselves. So I'm gonna try to keep it on topic, but it's gonna bounce around. Let's stick to coronavirus for right now and how you can do things and what I'm doing. So I beginning, I've begun to pick up little things. In the past, I wouldn't really use these as much because, well, I don't like chemicals and I try to keep them out of my thing, but I've got little Clorox wipes. I've got big Clorox wipes. Now, if you have a home or you have an apartment, how I do it, I'm using it for my home and my car. If I, if I think I've been you know, touching a lot of stuff and been exposed, even if I pure all my hands, but I have it all over my steering wheel, everywhere, I don't freak out about it. I just go around and wipe it down every once in a while. And, you know, it's good to be, maybe have a schedule on that. Everybody's gonna be different. And some people are just gonna go, give me a break. Well, I'm following what they're talking about from scientists, from virologists, from people who are actually studying this and work within that field so that, that's that's the best i can say is what they're telling me to do uh so you know you have your wipes these are the ones i use for kind of cleaning my body and everything i have another brand i use but this is gold bjj they're tea tree wipes they have some other things in them but they're all natural and I'm not sure whether tea tree will kill off viruses. Uh, I know it works for staff and other things, so that's more for my just overall hygiene and health. But I think you should stick with probably alcohol of a high degree with uh, Purell. I use Purell as an example. I'm not trying to use that brand. I'm talking about hand sanitizer that is kills 99% of germs and has ethyl alcohol as the main ingredient. Uh, this is a good thing. I also, coming in the mail today to my Amazon locker is a is nitrile gloves, which I'm gonna use to kind of lower the hand washing burden on myself. And uh, I apologize to those environmentalists. I want to be environmentally sound, but uh, I also wanna keep going and live and I wanna help humans. And I hope that ultimately the use of these nitrile gloves is you know a necessary evil at this time so you have to make those choices now the mask i'm using and i've had in my possession already was is a it's a p100 so uh from what i know and correct me if i'm wrong i could be completely ignorant to this i haven't done a whole ton of research but i i, I did a little bit and i think this is even more more uh fine than uh, N95 that they're talking about. I have this for when I was dealing with mold and uh, I didn't pick the pink, but it's kind of a nice look, you know? And uh, you also have to use these correctly. So this is where I differ than some of the experts, uh, potentially, because they're saying, oh, don't go get masks, don't get, get masks. Well, there was a study about H1N1 and that masks were effective because it helped distance people from each other. And uh, there was a several reasons, and I don't know if, it's, if it was truly blocking the particular matter or the droplets, but for me, whether it's peace of mind or not, 
I'm gonna wear this and it has a seal around my, my mouth and I'll shave today. I hate to be clean shaven, but that's gonna help the seal. And so I'm gonna do that. The other masks, they really only work as well as you, you can seal them off. And then also your eyes, from what I've heard, are a area where you can get this virus. So, you know, but, but does it cut it down on 25% with wearing a mask and no goggles? I'll take that. So you make your decision. I know there's a whole bunch of controversy about masks. I'm using them. More wipes, Purell, and these are dollar store. So go to your, you're gonna have to go to different places that maybe you don't usually go and think about maybe they'll have supplies. Uh, I'll give you some places. Harbor Freight is a place that you might find masks and goggles for cheap. Or, you know, there's, there's the online sources are getting inundated and sold out. People are panicking and it's unfortunate because it would be great if we tried to get supplies enough to every person. And I think if we look to what China has done and going forward, I think we're gonna look back and applaud them for how well they have handled this, this pandemic. And of course, there's gonna be other things that I don't know about. I've heard some human rights things that have gone on there, but it's hearsay. And until I've seen it proven, I don't know. All I can do is say bravo to China for their, their ability to treat people for their efficiency and how they've set up things and how they've made public awareness instead of, uh, you know, and, and had people quarantined properly instead of dropping the ball every switch way in the United States, they just keep dropping it. And uh, it's unfortunate, it's, to say the least, that's a pretty light word for it. But um, the other thing, so here's another little device I keep with me, you know, I do have arrhythmias and, and this I can hold near my phone, my fingers on it, it's called a Cardia with a K, K-A-R-D-I-A device and syncs up with my phone. And if I think I'm having a dangerous or even a AFib arrhythmia, I can get an EKG here and send it off to a doctor. And this is the kind of things that I'll be bringing with me into the wilderness now. Will I be able to get help quickly? I might be done, but it's better better to have it than not. Gives me some peace of mind. I haven't had to use it in a while. Things have been very good. So, like I said, I, I, I will speak to some of where I'm at with my health. And this little guy. So how can we, because here's our phones. Another thing, I have a device that I, I sent somewhere that I don't have with me, unfortunately that you put your phone in, it's called phone soap, and you plug it in and it UV lights your phone. So it wipes out, I'll wait for the helicopter. It's gonna clean all the bacteria and viruses off your phone, because these things are disgusting. And just think about how many things we touch, we pure all our hands, but we've touched this, we do this. It's just gonna keep reinfecting you. And the biggest thing then is just ultimately do not put your hands above your shoulders. Make a mindfulness practice. Don't touch your face unless you have gloves on, unless you've just Purell. I'm gonna keep using Purell, hand sanitized, wash your hands for 20 seconds, etc., etc. So having a device for your touch screen, this can be helpful. You're not touching it as much. But I also take uh, everything from the gel to these wipes and I wipe down my phone periodically. And another thing that you wanna think about is these disgusting things, our headsets. So we forget. I mean, I'm, my hands are all over these all the time. I don't know how to fix this problem. I think, you know, you put them in the sun to clean them off. Do you wipe them down with the Clorox wipes? You know, just something to think about. I don't have the answer, but, but and, I, and I know some people are gonna think, see this and go, well, my goodness, how are you gonna worry about all that? Guess what, it's not a worry. I don't sit there and go, oh, 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 OCD. Apologize if you're OCD, I don't have that, but I know it's crippling. No, it's about practical solutions. Do you think the people that work in the hospitals are called OCD when they wash their hands or they protect themselves? No, they're doing what you're supposed to do. Because this is, I hate to tell everyone, this is for real. This is happening. 2020, 
regardless of the plans you had, regardless of anything, Mother Nature don't give a fuck. She's not, I mean, natural disasters, they come when they want. So remember that when you start to tell yourself, oh, maybe this is stupid, this shouldn't be happening, this can't be happening. No, it's happening. And I don't mean to scare people, I'm not, I hope it blows over and we find out that it's not as bad, but why not take precaution? So, boy, and I'm going long again, but that's all I can do, this is a longer video. So, uh, finding also, I for myself, if you are gonna go into the wilderness, if you're gonna go other places, you know, because of being on Medicaid, because I'm broke as shit and have no money, uh, not mocking that, just is what it is, there is programs, they used to call it an Obama phone, but it's really like a Medicaid phone. And I had one previous from another company, it's still working, and I believe it works on Sprint and some other network. And I think this one's Verizon that I got in California. And their Android phones are very basic, they have like, I mean the screen is so scratched up just because whatever they put on that screen, but it works, an emergency. And my other phone is AT&T, my primary phone. So these cost me nothing. I'm not, I know a lot of people who have means can go out and buy like a burner phone or something. And I think that's a good idea to have a backup is all I'm saying, especially if you're in compromised health like myself. When I'm out in the boondocks, out in the sticks, in the countryside, in the mountains, wherever I'm going to be, and one network comes up when I'm in emergency and another one doesn't, I have backup. So that's something that I do. Uh, again, I'm, I'm for, I'm, I would love not to have free phones. I'm fortunate to be unfortunate in this circumstance to be qualifying for these free phones where I don't pay for them. So. Uh, but to just getting a phone on Craigslist or something else and, and signing it up for a basic service shouldn't be too much. Um, so, what else are we gonna talk about? Well, I'm here also to say, let's not freak out. Enjoy moments, boost your immune system, do all the things to keep yourself robust. The last thing you want, you yourself, your kid, your husband, wife to have to do right now, or whoever you know, is to need the resources of an emergency room, urgent care, because first of all, we need these resources for those who are suffering from this virus or who are already ill. So if you can reschedule a surgery, if you can prevent yourself from accidents right now, because you don't want to be in the environment where there's a lot of people infected if you don't have to. So that's what I'm doing. My kidneys now more than ever, I'm eating the low oxalate diet, drinking plenty of water. I'm making sure I take my medication so I don't end up with a kidney stone and have an emergency. Um, and, and also taking care of my heart. But how am I doing that? I'm doing the same things that are even more important now than they were before. Get in the cold water. This is going to boost your immune system so much. And it's free and it's at your home. I have to come here to the beach or go to the cold shower over here, but find your resource for cold. Get barefoot, get out there, ground. It's proven to boost your immune system as well, immune system. Okay, and meditate if you can. Do de-stressing activities. Be with friends, family, people that are gonna respect this, this virus, but be in community community and and smile and and you got to keep yourself as, as mentally well because anytime we worry and we stress we lower our immune and we we can't who wants to do that in this time or ever really so I'm doing those practices of what boosts my immune eating I've cut out sugar and I mean that is my fallback that is my comfort that is my thing that I am not a perfect eater. I fuck up all the time. And I wouldn't say all the time, that's relative, but I do. And so sugar is going to probably not be great for me right now. And alcohol for those, some are gonna drink away their panic, fears. Everybody has a right to do what you wanna do. That's the bottom line. Everybody has to take responsibility for their own selves and their own family. For me right now, that means not 
Uh, I'm not drinking anyway, but I'm giving that as an example. Now, medical cannabis, am I still gonna smoke? Yeah, when I need to and when I'm in pain, but am I gonna try to lower that just to take the, the pressure off of my lungs and my, my, the cilia and the, you know, just make sure my, my throat is not overtaxed? And I try to do that regardless. I'm not somebody that just smokes marijuana all day long. I use it strategically when I need it and when I'm in fibro pain. So that is that and, um, I'm gonna, this last part of the video is gonna lead to what's next for me. I have to go off away from this area. And previous to this, I was just about to make my video announcing that I need help. I need, I'm, I need, I really need help paying for my treatment. Uh, I just had to buy all my peptides again. And to keep them even on ice where I'm going, sometimes costs me, now I'm looking at with gas, and to get the ice and do everything, uh, I think I'm averaging around 40 to 50 bucks a week sometimes. Not always that much, because sometimes I can keep it longer, but it's spendy if I can't find a dollar store for the dollar ice, and I can't let these medicines go to waste because they're really what's working for me. And my food, also, I can't afford to go eat out at all and there's no foods that really meet my restricted diet so i cook my meals and i'm eating organ meats i'm eating um, the most nutrient dense foods i can find and using my food stamps to to get all these foods so i have to cook and i can't like go every day to the store especially during the virus to limit my exposure i have to buy it and put it in a cooler and i have to make it last so these are some of the things I'm really, really hoping to get help with. And uh, it worries me of how I'm gonna figure out how to pay for this stuff. But I also have very little choice and I'm just gonna, for now, I don't know when I'm gonna reach my limits, but I'm just on my credit cards and uh, gonna probably ruin my credit forever. But I, there's not much people in our circumstances can do. So, um, you know, another thing is also put things around you. I think I've shown you guys this in previous videos. I took this from my car. I have like four or five hearts hanging and I've got all little things and stickers that make me smile and think and get my mind distracted from the chaos. So, you know, put these in your office, have something that makes you feel good. Lavender, uh, lavender. I've had this since I was in, uh, Abiquiu, New Mexico from a lavender farm. Sea mineral body mist, but it's a ah, it's just the best lavender. And for me, smelling lavender is a de stressor. Uh, and I have other essential oils I use, I didn't bring them all out peppermint. And this one is pure joy, which I really like from Pharmaca. It's, it's a blend, but it's just it, it really this. Olfactory sense so quickly can calm you or just change things and it's lovely. This is pure joy from Pharmaca. Love it. Uh, all right, so that's a bit of a breakdown uh, of things. I didn't give you concrete steps yet of what you can do and how you can bring yourself to your wilderness or limit your exposure. I will do that when I've written out notes and I can come in more organized thought, but I wanted to kind of tell you where I'm at, what's going on. I've been feeling good with the peptide therapy. I need to continue it. And I also am supposed to be going to see a bunch of specialists for my other issues, but I'm gonna have to put that off for now. And my hernias, all those are for the future. I can't fix those, I just have to deal with it. I have a hernia belt coming in the mail today, a new one, because my other one wore out, so I can really strap in and hold these, hold my guts in because 14 years like this has been really painful and uh, you know that's the kind of things that eventually when I launch my crowdfund when I offer up areas for you to kind of send me money via the cash app or Venmo or any of these other things I don't even know how to do it really yet but I'll figure it out um, gift cards for maybe a grocery store uh, things of that are really gonna help me uh, to get what I need until I can get back on my feet working 
and and not just fighting this illness and everything. So uh, if you believe in me, if you like what I'm putting out there, think about it. Just the best I can ask you to do is to like the videos and subscribe and comment. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks for bearing with my long windedness and know I'm trying to do the best I can. I'm learning as I go. I'm a rambler. That's just who I am. And uh, I appreciate all of you. And I'm just sending out as much good vibes and love to everyone during this time that a lot of people are, you know, I, I think it's scary for a lot of us out there with chronic illness and it's okay to be scared. So uh, just, you know, know you're not alone and there's a lot of other people who are scared and fear doesn't mean you're a, you're a wimp. Fear doesn't mean you're a hypochondriac. Don't let other people put that in your head and, and just know that you know your own body the best. You know your own experiences, your own trauma and, and own that and let, you know, I always kind of do this and I let, let it go from others because I have friends that mock me. I have family that mocks me. I have, um, you know, strangers, but you know, you have to own who you are ultimately in anything you do. And I think once you do that, uh, you get a little bit of freedom. So thank you so much. Peace.